Let's flash forward from 2000 in the second of those papers to a year and a half ago, August 26, 2019. This was an op-ed in the New York Times. Our food is killing too many of us. It was authored by Darius Mozafarian, Dean of Nutrition at Tufts, and Dan Glickman, former Secretary of Agriculture of the United States. Uh, I definitely commend this op-ed to you if you haven't read it. In it, these two authors cite the primary peer-reviewed literature that makes the case that poor diet quality is responsible for over 500,000 premature deaths in the United States all by itself. And that's every year. Now, we can't ignore the fact that we're meeting virtually because of COVID. We can't ignore the fact that we're having this conversation about health and food and all the rest during a pandemic. When the pandemic took us across the threshold of more than 500,000 premature deaths, it was a tragic, mournful milestone. And, and as a nation, we mourned it. And for anyone who suffered pandemic losses, my, my heartfelt condolences, I think we probably all have at this point at one remove or another. And it may interest you to know that I uh, got COVID several months ago, and I'm, I'm happy to tell you about my experience, if you like, during the Q&A. Uh, but when the pandemic took more than 500,000 lives uh, from our national community, it was a tragic milestone. And I'm here today to tell you that poor diet quality does that every year. And we don't mourn it and we don't grieve and we don't have services to acknowledge it. And we don't have moments of silence. It hides in plain sight. We are seemingly oblivious to it. But how can we be oblivious to it when there are op-eds about it in the New York Times by past secretaries of agriculture? How can we not be outraged? How can we not react to this? SARS-CoV-2, the virus, is not something over which we have complete control. But the food supply is. We produce it. And it kills more than 500,000 people a year. It's truly unconscionable. Every time I get the opportunity, you know, it used to be at a podium, it will be again soon for now, it's, you know, the Zoom interface, but every time I get in front of a crowd of people to talk about this stuff, I get myself all worked up and I want to know where is the outrage? Diet kills as many people every year as the pandemic killed in this past year, and it hides in plain sight. It's just business as usual to quote Supertramp, breakfast in America, and on and on we go. We ought to be outraged. This is a scandal. But what it means is that whereas diet was one of the top three causes of premature death and chronic disease when my career began in 1993, it is now the leading cause of premature death. Period, full stop, drop the, drop the mic, thanks for coming. Diet is the leading cause of premature death and chronic disease in the modern world. And it's around the modern world. It's not just the U.S. So we are, uh, and this is a very dubious distinction, we are the epicenter of the global pandemic of bad eating and bad health. But we have very effectively exported our bad dietary habits and our bad food products. And so the Global Burden of Disease Study has looked at dietary factors and all cause mortality and chronic disease in developed countries all around the world. And basically diet is the number one indicator of adverse health status in the entire developed world at this point. And little by little, we're taking over every other country too with hyper-processed junk food and uh, processed meats and, and animal food, heavy diets. And this trend has to be stopped. This is a this is a pandemic, uh, and this is a global travesty because it's one we know full well how to prevent. Now, that's a bit gloomy. Uh, the good news is we can flip the coin around, look at the other face, and tell the same story uh, from a happier perspective. I particularly like this study by Earl Ford and colleagues at the CDC, Healthy Living is the Best Revenge. This was back in 2009. They looked at 23,000 adults living in and around Potsdam, Germany, and for the sake of expediency, I'll just cut to the chase. They, they compared people who didn't smoke, ate well, and that was simply defined as routine intake of vegetables, fruits, and whole grains, were physically active and had a healthy weight, to people who smoked, didn't eat well, so did not have habitual intake of vegetables, fruits, and whole grains, were not physically active and had an unhealthy weight. These people who had those four things going for them, over the multi-year span of the study had an 80% lesser incidence, lesser rate of all major chronic disease than these people. 
if you flip the switch from bad to good for any one of these factors, the probability of developing any major chronic disease goes down about 50%. But if you fire on all four cylinders, it goes down a staggering 80%. And I say staggering because ask yourself this, imagine if there were a drug available, FDA approved, uh, free of side effects, perfectly safe, inexpensive, accessible to all, and taken once daily, it would reduce your risk of ever getting any major chronic disease, heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, dementia, et cetera, by 80%. I mean, who wouldn't want that prescription? Well, we have it. It just doesn't come in a pill. It's diet and lifestyle. And, and we've known about that for 30 years, at least, if not since Hippocrates. Uh, so this is a happy story too, because that latent power is there for us to exploit. And ideally we would exploit it at the level of our whole culture and society. But you know, you and I don't need to keep waiting on the world to change, to borrow from John Mayer. We can take matters into our own hands and say, I want some of that. My people, my family, my tribe, 80% lesser risk of all major chronic disease. Yes, yeah, sign me up. Well, that's what this represents. And, and this is a rich, and repetitive literature. So these findings, 80% less chronic disease, premature death when you get diet and a few aspects of lifestyle right, reaffirmed in study after study, and quite frankly, after study, after study, after study, after study. And I, I flash these references at you, and I guess to show you I've done my homework, but mostly just to show this truly is a repetitive drumbeat in the peer-reviewed literature. And of course, this is a very short illustrative list. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of studies spanning decades showing with unbelievable consistency that if you get diet and lifestyle right, your probability of developing any major chronic disease goes down 80%. It's just about 80% every time. And that numerical or quantitative consistency across studies, across populations, across geography, across time is really remarkable. What it tells us is this is true. This is reliably true. We know this. It's not up for debate. That's how I feel about it.